Hello, this is Bad Bob the Astronomer. I'm just giving you another quick look at my little telescope here that I use to uh, take the uh, videos and the uh, still photographs of the transit of Venus just a few minutes ago. Uh, this is just a quick look at what the telescope is like. This is the eyepiece right here. This is a 15 millimeter uh, colossal type eyepiece and it gives about 47 power with this telescope. <clears throat> the telescope lens is up here in this area. It's 70 millimeters in diameter with a focal length of 700 millimeters. This is a finder scope right here that helps aim the main telescope at the right spot in the sky. And I've got it taped off with a piece of paper to keep me from accidentally looking at the sun through it. The main telescope is safe to look at the sun with, with the, uh, my eye or the camera because it's got a mylar solar filter in front of the objective telescope lens. And that blocks nearly all of the light from coming into the uh, telescope. It blocks, I think, about 99.99% of the light or something like that. And just lets a tiny fraction through so that the bright disk of the sun is reduced to a safe level to look, through, look at. Now, this is a, a tripod that I adapted to use the telescope with, a camera tripod, because when I bought this telescope 10 years ago, I didn't keep the mounting that it came with lubricated properly and it seized up on me. So I adapted this camera tripod to use. And actually, as you can see, it, um, it's, it, it actually functions pretty well. Uh, you can actually swivel the telescope this way to get it uh, to the correct horizontal position you want. And then you could lock it into place with a little clamp there. And that weight tends to balance it a bit. And then what you could do is, uh, by loosening this, this is a clamp. You can aim it anywhere you want vertically by a combination of the two motions. You can aim it almost anywhere in the sky you want to just by swiveling it around like that. It's pretty good, really. So I'll leave it clamped about like that. And uh, this also has what you call slow motion controls. I don't know whether you can see them very well, <clears throat> but this has an, an altitude slow motion control. If you want to uh, raise it up or lower it, you could turn this knob, and as you can see, if you watch carefully, you can see the telescope too moving up very slowly. Make sure that's decently clamped. Yeah. Okay, this, this knob right here allows you to raise the telescope up and down in small amounts, so you can aim it more precisely at the moon or a star or a planet or something in the sky you want to look at. And I don't know whether you can see this motion or not. I'll swivel this around this way so you can see this one move. What this motion does right here, I'll lock this in place. This allows you to rotate the telescope sideways in very small amounts. You can actually, as I rotate this knob, you can actually see it moving. Can you see it moving in slow, small amounts? What happens is when the Earth rotates, a star or a planet or the moon will move through the field of vision of the telescope, and you have to keep recentering the telescope on what you're looking at. It takes maybe about two minutes at that power for the uh, star or the planet to move out of the field of vision of the telescope. Most really good amateur telescopes have equatorial mounts with clock drives and they'll follow an object in the sky automatically for several hours. But this one doesn't. This is a very simple type of mounting right here. And, uh, but it's good enough for just going out and having a quick look at the sky with a very good telescope. This is actually very good for its price. Um, see if I can, yeah, so you could see this going up now, I think, tilting back up like that moving upward now. I think it's reached about the limit of its motion. It doesn't have a, an extreme range of motion, but it's good enough to look at an object for an hour or so approximately. And uh, that's about all you really need. And uh, this is the focusing mechanism. I'll turn this around right here and I'll show you how the thing focuses. Right here. Now by rotating this knob right here, just like I'm doing. There's one on the other side, too, to make it convenient. You notice that this eyepiece is moving in a little bit, and you can move it in and out, and that enables you to focus it. And this, this eyepiece is actually coming out in this direction, so what you're doing is, when, the, when you look in the telescope, you're actually looking at it this way right here, in that direction, because there's a little bit of a mirror at a 45, a tiny mirror in here at a 45 degree angle, that bounces the light out at a 90 degree angle. So that when the telescope is aimed right overhead in the sky, like this, like that, what you can actually do is you don't look up through it, 
you look at a comfortable angle like this and you don't break your neck looking up. I hope you can see me in the video. I think you probably can, all right? So you're looking at it this way when you look straight up in the sky. So it makes it a lot easier on the neck. And uh, then you can still focus it that way if you want. If I sound a little bit tired, it's because I'm worn out from photographing and watching the uh, transit of Venus. It was an awe-inspiring sight. This telescope, uh, I think it cost $150 about 10 years ago. I got it from Efton Science in Toronto, but the other companies like Orion Binoculars and Telescopes sell telescopes similar to this. And um, uh, the optics in this thing are very good. It's really, really a high quality telescope. And uh, just for looking around the sky at the moon and the planets, it's really superb. And as you can see, it's, even with this rather heavy tripod, it's still pretty easy to pick up all in one piece. I can carry it in and out of the house in one section. I don't have to take it apart to take it, to take it in to the, the door of my house. One thing you have to be careful of, though, is when you're carrying it around like that, not to bang it. See, the tripod can be raised and lowered like that, too, if you want to uh, get the eyepiece at a more convenient height. If somebody short wants to look through it like a, you know, a child or a shorter person, you can actually adjust the height of the eyepiece that way and it'll still work. That's one advantage of a camera tripod. You can also expand the legs a little bit up and down on the tripod that way. So it's really a pretty good in instrument. You just have to make sure it's not very heavy. You have to be careful not to bang into it or you'll knock it over. Now this, this eyepiece, as I mentioned, is about 47 power. Now the way you find the power is it's got a, the telescope has a focal length of the objective lens up here of about 700 millimeters and the eyepiece is 15 millimeters. So you divide 700 by 15 and that gives you the power. It's actually about 46.7 power or something like that, but I just rounded it off to 47. You really can't see the power of that precisely when you're looking through the telescope. But normally this telescope would go up to about 150 power with a higher power eyepiece and still get sharp images. And the way you do that is you just undo these set screws right here and slide the eyepiece out like that and then you get a shorter focal length eyepiece and put it back in there like that. Just replace it with a shorter focal length eyepiece and tighten these set screws up so it won't fall out. And by the way, you can rotate this mirror by using these set screws right here to the comfortable angle you want it at. I'll see if I can get this to work. Ooh, it's pretty tight because I didn't want it to slide apart when I was using it. There we go. So you can twist this up like this. Twist it all the way around that way. It tends to slide out though, so you have to be careful. This is the this is this diagonal you can replace with a straight through eyepiece if you want, or a different diagonal if you want, star diagonal it's called. And this, this, like I mentioned, this is a little finder telescope with about five power. It's similar to a gun sight on a rifle. It has a wide angle field of view and makes it much easier when you get a lot, this lined up with this telescope. When you're looking at the moon in the sky or something like that, you can get it centered on a, on a cross here in the center of this, and it will be lined up with that. And this telescope at a much higher power will be pointed at the moon. And this telescope has a much narrower angle of view or field of view than this telescope. So this makes it much easier to aim the telescope. Normally, you get a preliminary aim by just sighting along the tube like that, and then you can use that telescope to help you sight it. But um, that's basically the way it works, and uh, there's really not much to it. One thing you have to be careful of, though, is not to put your fingers on the lens or get any dirt on them. Or you don't clean them very often either because um, the lens surfaces are very delicate. You don't want to damage them or put fingerprints on them or anything like that because Fingerprints can eventually damage the surface of a lens permanently, and they're, they're not that easy to get off either. You can clean them, but it's a chore to do it, and every time you clean the lens, you're running the risk of damaging it. So it's better to keep it clean all the time anyway, if you can. Eventually, dust will get on it, and there's all kinds of instructions on how to clean lenses properly, but I won't go into that now. But anyway, that's the basic functioning of a small telescope that an astronomer can, an amateur astronomer can start out with and have fun with it and get instant use out of it right away. Be able to locate a bright, the bright moon or a bright planet in the sky without too much problem. You notice this eyes piece I took out right here. Uh, don't start with anything smaller than 70 millimeters, I would recommend, but you can get a really good 60 millimeter telescope sometime. See the barrel diameter of the eyepiece right here? That's one and a quarter inches across. And that's the uh, size of eyepiece that works best. 
Some of the really old telescopes that are small like this have smaller eyepiece barrels and quite often the eyepieces were of very poor quality but if you buy the one and a quarter inch barrel size for reasonable prices you can get very high quality eyepieces which, are, which is quite important to have when you're getting good views through a telescope. This eyepiece is actually not very expensive, this type of eyepiece, and it works very well. You don't need to spend an exorbitant amount. Usually the best eyepieces you can get for a telescope like this are either plossels or orthoscopics. Now if I go up to a, like a longer focal length eyepiece, like, like say I put a 35 millimeter focal length eyepiece here, 700 divided by 35 would be about, um, about uh, 20 power. So. Uh, that would be your low power eyepiece that would get a wider angle field of view in the sky which would make it nice to see like large star clusters and galaxies and things like that. Well I think I'm running close to the end of my video time so I think I'll cut it off now. And that's sort of an introduction. My name is Bad Bob the Astronomer and I'll probably be including a few instructional videos along with some of the things I see in the sky and stuff like that from time to time on YouTube. Pardon me if I seem a little tired and I'm dressed up in really old battered clothes but uh, these are my work clothes I use for working on telescopes and stuff like that. So here I go.